Ode to Psyche by John Keats O oh, goddess, hear these tuneless numbers, rung by sweet enforcement and remembrance dear, and pardon that thy secrets should be sung, even into thine own soft conched ear. Surely I dreamt today, or did I see the winged psyche with awakened eyes? I wandered in a forest thoughtlessly, and on the sudden, fainting with surprise, saw two fair creatures couched side by side in deepest grass beneath the whispering roof of leaves and trembled blossoms where there ran a brooklet scarce espied. Mid hushed, cool-rooted flowers, fragrant-eyed, blue, silver-white, and budded Tyrian, they lay calm breathing on the bedded grass, their arms embraced, and their pinions too, their lips touched not, but had not bade adieu, as if disjointed by soft-handed slumber, and ready still past kisses to outnumber, at tender eye dawn of Aurorian love, the winged boy I knew. But who wast thou, O oh, happy, happy dove, his psyche true? O oh, latest born and loveliest vision far of all Olympus' faded hierarchy, fairer than Phoebe's sapphire-regioned star, or Vesper, amorous glowworm of the sky. Fairer than these, though temple thou hast none, nor altar heaped with flowers, nor virgin choir to make delicious moan upon the midnight hours. No voice, no lute, no pipe, no incense sweet from chain-swung censer teeming, no shrine, no grove, no oracle, no heat of pale-mouthed prophet dreaming. O oh, brightest, though too late for antique vows, too, too late for the fond believing lyre, when holy were the haunted forest boughs, holy the air, the water, and the fire. Yet even in these days, so far retired from happy pieties, thy lucent fans, fluttering among the faint Olympians, I see and sing, by my own eyes inspired. So let me be thy choir, and make a moan upon the midnight hours. Thy voice, thy lute, thy pipe, thy incense sweet, from swinged censer teeming, thy shrine, thy grove, thy oracle, thy heat of pale-mouthed prophet dreaming. Yes, I will be thy priest, and build a fane in some untrodden region of my mind, where branched thoughts, new-grown with pleasant pain, instead of pines shall murmur in the wind. Far, far around shall those dark-clustered trees fledge the wild-ridged mountains steep by steep. And there, by zephyrs, streams, and birds, and bees, the moss-lain dryads shall be lulled to sleep. And in the midst of this wide quietness, a rosy sanctuary will I dress, with the wreathed trellis of a working brain, with buds and bells, and stars without a name, with all the gardener fancy e'er could feign, who, breeding flowers, will never breed the same. And there shall be for thee all soft delight that shadowy thought can win, a bright torch and a casement ope at night to let the warm love in.